So what is up everyone today? It is Sunday. It's the 19th of April. Uh, I almost said March. Uh, we are in the phases of quarantine right now and it is day 20 of my COVID campaign for financial awareness and today I want to talk markets. So I'm currently live on IG so I'll answer questions there but I am also going to be recording this and sharing it later. Now the reason I'm here on a Sunday is because Thursday I didn't make a video because I was busy that day so today I'm making up for it and what I want to do is talk about the actual markets and investing themselves. So I'm going to review where, we're, where we are right now in terms of the markets since uh, the corona crisis or the coronavirus kind of took over and uh, I want to make sure that people can understand exactly what we're dealing with in terms of the markets, what has happened since then and uh, what might happen coming forward so I'm going to be sharing uh, this post on Facebook LinkedIn Twitter and of course on IGTV uh, so I want to make sure that people can understand exactly what we're dealing with I want to talk about a couple things in terms of uh, investing such as time horizon and I want to talk about um, risk tolerance Two fundamental factors with when investing your money that you need to understand about yourself because when you invest your money it's more about you and how you handle it as opposed to uh, what exactly you're invested in uh, what you're invested in is going to be dictated by the factors within you and how you handle investing and your emotions because that will determine your success uh, so what I want people to understand is exactly what has happened to the market uh, where we are since the coronavirus outbreak and uh, what we need to understand about it moving forward so first things first I want people to understand is to jump into the CERB benefit so this is the Canadian emergency response benefit that you qualify for if you've lost your job due to coronavirus I'm going to be putting the link to it in the post so you can actually apply for it two factors I want you to understand Number one, uh, make sure you're applying every month. So you have to reapply now if you applied at the end of March. So you reapply now uh, for the end of April. Uh, another factor is that it is taxable income. So next year you will get dinged with the tax bill. So if you can, put a bit away to save for your tax bill coming next year and uh, make sure you're ready for that so you're not surprised when you have a little bit of extra money owing to the government because you receive these benefits at this time right now. So that is an important thing as well. So I want people to know and apply for this if they can qualify for it. And most most people can if you've lost your job but if not you can apply for regular EI and uh, go from there but the government's announcing new benefits all the time to help individuals out I just want people to make sure they're taking care of their four walls right now and go from there so what I'm going to jump into is the actual Toronto Stock Exchange so this is the TSX and since uh, the coronavirus outbreak we are looking at a decline at its worst point from its peak so the peak of the coronavirus or uh, the peak of the Toronto Stock Exchange we saw almost 18,000 the Toronto Stock Exchange since then we are down about 20 or 20 percent since the the mark of around February 20th it hit its peak when it hit its highest low or its lowest low, and this was right after the outbreak of the coronavirus, we are looking at the stock market in Toronto going down to about 11,000. So we lost about 38% of stock market value in Toronto in the course of about three weeks, a dramatic drop, a very, very dramatic drop. Since then, we've gained back about 18% of that. And overall, from its highest mark at February 20th, we are down about 20%. Now, if you had your money in at the peak and you saw it go down 38%, I'm very certain that you're not happy about that. So the biggest issue I want people to understand is that it is okay to feel upset when you see yourself losing money on the stock market. But the one thing to understand about it is that if you keep your money in and it goes back, you regain those values. So since then, if I told you one month later, we'd be up 18% to only being down 20% from the peak, you'd be quite happy. And when you actually look at three, four, five year averages, we are still up overall in the past three to five years. The biggest issue is that it was such a dramatic drop and then a dramatic increase after that and that's usually how it works the market will grow steadily over time and then in an instant it will drop uh, basically due to sheer panic and that's the biggest issue most people didn't understand what was going on with the coronavirus so huge huge loss of people just started selling 
all their stocks and then the markets went down accordingly and that was where we got those massive drops and we actually saw the market shut down because values were just dropping way too quick so there's like a security valve where it drops below seven percent and then again below ten percent where the market will stop trading allow people to regather themselves for 15 minutes and then restart again so this is where we saw some massive declines in one week two week and just one day drops that were just massive uh, what I want people to look at is the actual, um, yeah, yeah, so Canada is down about 20% uh, overall since uh, the coronavirus outbreak started. If we're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, if the one thing with the Dow Jones Industrial Average is that we are actually not in that bad of territory when you think about it in terms of the Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So I want to show people several different charts here. I know charts are boring and whatnot, but if you actually look at the chart, and the big thing to focus on is the bottom part right here uh, where it says five-day change. So what I want people to take a look at, when we look at this five-day change, we're up 2% in, in one week. So last week that ended on Friday, the 17th, the 10th to the 17th, or I'm sorry, the 13th to the 17th, that five-day change was up 2%. When we actually look at a one-month change, the one month change on the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up over 20%. So if you were to look at that one month, you would think, holy crap, we're up 20%. This is amazing. When you look at the three month average, though, it's still down 17%. 17%. Year to date, it's down 15%. So the biggest factor that I want people to understand is that trying to time which point to sell and which point to buy is very difficult. So if you look overall, though, in the one year, or the, the year to date, down 15%. But look at the one year average, only down 8%. And the Dow Jones is still 5,000 points down from where, where it began, or from the highest point, which was again in about mid February. So if you look at the three year average, up 15%. Now, if I told you three years ago that we're going to go through a global pandemic uh, and the markets would crash, the largest crashes in one day, one day. Largest one-day crashes in the history of the market, and you would still be up 15% on your money, you would say, I'm crazy, right? But that's exactly what happened. The markets had their largest single-day crashes in the history of the stock market, and yet after three years, sitting where we are today, the markets in America, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, is still up 15% overall in the past three years. Even if you look at the past five years, 35%, close to 36%, the markets are up in the past five years, and this includes the coronavirus crash. So what does that tell you? Staying in for the long term is exactly what you need to do. When we look at the S&P 500, and this is the broader market where uh, mo the majority of stocks fall into the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial only has about uh, only has 30 stocks in it, whereas the S&P 500 obviously has 500 more stocks. So if you look at the past five days on the S&P 500, that five-day change up 3%, which is pretty good for a one-week average. When you look at one month, up 19% in one month. When you look at the year to date, which is in the top right corner here, negative 11%. And when you look at the three month average, negative 13%. So we are down about 13% from our highs, but on year to date, we're still only down 11%. And when the markets actually hit their highs, we haven't actually gone all the way back there. We're not near there yet. So you got to figure that when we do get back to pre-market territory at our highs, then the money that you have in there will obviously come back to where it was. If you look at the one year average, only down less than 1%. Isn't that quite impressive? Only 1% down in the past year. That's pretty impressive considering we're in the midst of a global pandemic. When you look at the three-year average, up 20% on the S&P 500. And this is the broader market where majority of people are in. And then if you look at the five-year, 38% on the S&P 500 on the five-year. And this includes the largest drops that recently happened due to the coronavirus pandemic. So what we need to understand is that these things are going to happen, but what we need to do is actually be smart with our investments and not start shifting them around when we don't understand what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, the best thing you can do is just hang tight.
what I want people to look at now is actually this uh, risk tolerance defined. So two factors involved, risk tolerance, time horizon. So what is risk tolerance? Investopedia describes it as the degree of variability in investment returns that investors are willing to withstand in their financial planning. Risk tolerance, risk, risk tolerance is an important component in investing. You should have a realistic understanding of your ability and willingness to stomach large swings in the value of your investments. If you take on too much risk, you might panic and sell at the wrong time. So the whole purpose of this is to understand yourself and your risk tolerance. If you understand yourself, the biggest issue you can have is selling at the wrong time. So selling at the bottom of the market like we just experienced. If you understand your risk tolerance, then you won't do that. So the whole purpose of risk tolerance is to know how you feel when you encounter large or periodic swings. Uh, several areas involving risk tolerance, aggressive risk tolerance. Usually these people are more savvy. They understand markets go up and down and can have drastic swings at any given time. So these are people that understand markets and have a longer time horizon. So usually they're younger. Uh, they're not usually retirees. Reason being is because retirees don't want to risk their capital because their earning days are gone. Um, a moderate or a balanced risk tolerance. So these are people that will only take on some risk, but don't want massive fluctuations. And most people fall into the moderate or balanced risk tolerance area. So when the markets go up to huge highs, they're not experiencing all those highs. But when they crash suddenly, they're not experiencing all those drops as well. So most people fall into that area. They don't want to stomach the huge swings. So they're willing to take periodic small swings. And then there's conservative where people are not willing to take on almost any risk. And usually they're in guaranteed instruments such as GICs and bonds. And these are people who usually who have built up enough capital where they don't want to take any risk. They're happy with a guaranteed return and they don't want to go through the swings of the market period at all. So they'll gain a little bit of interest over time, over the course of the year, and that is fine by them. And there's nothing wrong with being a conservative investor. In fact, the majority of people who've built up a net worth are conservative investors. So if we look at time horizon, Time horizon is an important one. Time horizons uh, vary according to your investment goals. So if your investment goal is to retire on time, you usually have a longer time horizon because you are actually getting to the point uh, where you want to retire, which could be 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. Uh, they, always, they usually vary by age. The longer the time horizon, the longer the power of compounding has to work. And this is why I stress to people they should start early because if you start early, compounding really kicks in on the back end of it. Uh, the basics of investment time horizon. This is the the period of time where one expects to hold their investment in anticipation of a return to hit a specific goal. So investments are generally, uh, generally broken down into two main categories, stocks, riskier, and bonds, less risky. The longer the time horizon, the more aggressive, the riskier their portfolio. An investor can build their portfolio over time with a riskier portfolio if they're an aggressive investor and have a longer time horizon. The shorter the time horizon, the more conservative, conservative, or less risky. This is because if you're going to be using your money now, you don't want to risk your capital. You don't want to risk what you've built up. So this is usually people who are already at the retirement point or getting close to the retirement point where they don't want to actually risk their money. If it's money that you need in a year from now, you don't want to deal with a coronavirus swing during the middle of that. And that's where time horizon comes into play. So what I'm going to include here as well is this post from The Balance. And I love The Balance. It's a great website. Breaks things down into easy understand, easy to understand investment concepts and debt, everything you want to know. Uh, so stock market crash, cause and effects, and how to protect yourself. So what they say, uh, they show that actually uh, the top five largest stock, stock market declines in one day have all happened this year. And they all happened due to coronavirus. Massive declines all in one day. Uh, what not to do in a crash. So during a crash, let me magnify this a little bit so we can see it a bit better. So what not to do in a crash. During a crash, don't give in to the temptation to sell. It's like trying to catch a falling knife. And if you've heard of the falling knife concept, you never, if you drop a knife, you get out of the way. You don't go to grab it. Uh, stock market crash will make the individual investor sell at rock bottom prices. This is precisely the wrong thing to do. The stock market usually makes up those losses in the months following the crash. Sometimes it takes years of following the crash, but it will make it up, and it always has. And uh, unless the world ends, it always will. If you're selling during the crash, you're probably not going to buy back in time to take advantage of that growth afterwards. That's a huge thing. 
protect yourself by rebalancing. So certain aspects of your portfolio, if you have all Canadian uh, mutual funds, they could grow very high, very quick. And US ones could be lagging. But what you want to do is sell off some of those higher Canadian funds and put them into the US funds at lower prices. This is why rebalances is so important. You sell at the high points and you buy at the low points. And this allows you to actually take advantage of down markets. And uh, when you make gains, you're actually using that extra capital from your gains to buy things on the cheap. And what I look to rebalance my clients once a year. So automatic rebalancing services are huge. Percentages, uh, you work within the percentages that you're given from the outset, and then you make sure it rebalances to those percentages every year. And that's something that uh, I think is very important. So check out this post by The Balance. It talks about stock market crashes and what not to do, how not to panic, and good things you could do to protect yourself during these uh, stock market crashes. What I want to include as well for people today is how to retire irrelevant, step five, investing. Uh, this is my post that is part of my seven-step retirement, relevant retirement system. And step five here will actually and how uh, investing pertains to your retirement goals. So... I mean, obviously, it makes sense. You want to invest your money, get to retirement. But people will understand how they react during that time and how they handle their investments is going to be a crucial factor into your retirement success. A uh, big factor with this inflationary risk. So you need to be investing because your money today will be worth less tomorrow. We all understand that. Inflation, you buy a coffee today, it costs a buck. You buy it 10 years from now, it's going to cost two bucks or whatever it may be. So your money now will need to grow over time to at least keep pace with inflation and that's why investing is so important and also understanding your magic retirement number how much you're going to actually need to retire on time the way you want to so check out that post there it's uh my relevant retirement system step five uh you can find me everywhere you want to be i'm on facebook this is my facebook page uh at joe budget boss all the platforms facebook instagram twitter and i'm also on linkedin but the facebook platform is actually one of the best ones to join because on that one it has more dynamic and i can share more links and actually more tips and tools for you uh you can go on twitter i'm actually posting on twitter quite often and uh, obviously instagram this post is going to be on igtv later on the catalog of uh, videos is actually on YouTube, so I'll share that link with here as well. So you can go all throughout the campaign. This is the 20th video, and we got 10 more coming all the way up until May 1st. I want people to check that out so they can get tools and tips uh, as we're going through the coronavirus and uh, learning a bit more about ourselves and learning a bit more about our money. You can also download the Combo Expenses Worksheet, which I'm going to be sharing in this post as well. Or you can reach out to me directly and contact me at www.budgetboss.ca slash contact. Uh, you can sign up for the email list or even book a meeting with me and talk to me directly. A lot of people have been reaching out lately, uh, a lot of time on our hands, so it's a good time to actually reach out, work on your financial plan, and go from there. So I'm going to be joining you tomorrow again on Monday, and I'm going to give my daily market update, and I'm also going to be talking about disability insurance. And I want people to understand disability insurance is one of the most important insurances you can have. So as we all know right now, people's income is being affected by this virus now imagine if your income was being affected because of injury or illness and a lot of our disability insurance comes from workplace but some people like myself don't actually get disability insurance plan so we need to get it on our own and make sure we take care of ourselves on our own so that's what i'll be talking about tomorrow tomorrow's monday it's the 20th so check that out and i want you guys to enjoy the rest of your sunday have a great one